scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Twice have you heard that all power belongs to God, not God and Satan, not God and men. It is exclusively that of God. That every time men seem to walk in dominion, that their dominion in this kingdom is shared dominion not absolute dominion we were made partakers it's not a life that we have on our own are we together and then we discussed a few things that would help us walk in faith so now we'll discuss the anointing i have by the privilege of god's grace i've had the honor of studying and teaching the subject of the power of God and the anointing for many years and you would think that after teaching this for so many years I would have exhausted everything to be known about the anointing and that is not true one of the ways you know that something comes from God is that 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 uh, that inability to exhaust the riches in it that is in God will also follow his thoughts and whatever it is that is of God you can never truly exhaust everything about the anointing about faith it is layer after layer when you are done with one layer God will honor you by unveiling another layer of that spiritual reality we need the anointing especially in the times that we live in Psalm 92 and verse 10 Psalm 92 and verse 10 let's begin our teaching now Please pay attention and then like we are already experiencing, please be sensitive because every time you teach on the anointing, the spirit of the living God has the assignment to bring confirmation to the things that are being taught. So it is not unusual. I know you know that by now when there are manifestations of the spirit while the word is coming, you just focus on the word and make sure that you have understanding. 92 verse 10 can we read together one to read but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn and i shall be anointed with fresh oil i shall be anointed with fresh oil the bible tells us to look up to jesus so theologically speaking jesus is our pattern man he represents perfect theology that means jesus was approved of god to be the reference every believer who wants to attain unto stature and growth in the spirit the bible mandates that you look primarily you look unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith you understudy his life and the way that he lived and you can glean wisdom and follow that spiritual pathway to a life of excellence and a life of glory the bible talks about jesus who although was the word he came as the word incarnate through the womb of a young virgin called mary and the bible lets us know that at age 12 jesus was about the temple learning he said shouldn't you know that i should be about my father's business are we together by the time he's 30 we see jesus coming to jordan to be baptized of john who was a prophet we call him the baptist 
John baptizes Jesus and he comes out of the water and the Bible says the heavens were opened and he saw the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus in the similitude of a dove and a voice spoke from heaven and said this is my beloved son are we Bible students in whom I am well pleased he said hear ye him and then as we'll be reading later on the Bible says the Spirit of God immediately drove him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil he was there fasting and praying 40 days and 40 nights and having you know triumph over the temptations of Satan the Bible records that he returned in the power of the Spirit and there began the ministry of signs and wonders the ministry of the supernatural that would not end culminated even in his resurrection and his exaltation at the right hand of the father so he became for us a template and a pattern man to study the dynamics of walking in the anointing what is the anointing we talk a lot about the anointing preachers want to be anointed business people want to be anointed career people want to be anointed there is such an obsession for the anointing and there's nothing wrong with that we need to be anointed it is my considered opinion that the anointing oil serves more for impartation than even cooking in Africa I think so I may be wrong but I think so that chances are excellent that if you see someone buying an anointing oil it, it hardly will be for the kitchen that's to tell you how much we believe in the anointing it's not mockery are you getting what I'm saying now I'm just showing you how determined we are to make sure the anointing is within our reach but it seems as though regardless all the oil that we have in our bottles and the ones we have through different mediums and right now sadly in Africa we've invented a lot of things largely extra biblical um, strategies to bring the anointing but it is it's a sincere desire from for, for, for God's people from God's people to bring the anointing within their reach somehow we have read through scripture and we have seen through the lives of a few people who seem to have been marvelously anointed by god we have seen the possibilities that have come from their lives be it in ministry be it in business when you see a man of god who is doing something very extraordinary and very supernatural you most likely will say that man is heavily anointed you may not say that man is full of faith subconsciously we have connected the anointing to supernatural extraordinary manifestations is that true yeah manifestations like healings deliverances you know impartations of the spirit supernatural prosperity influence anything that moves above and beyond the scope of science and may not seem to, to go through the normal law of process or the course of nature usually it attracts us and we credit that manifestation to the presence of the anointing what then is the anointing the anointing um, the, the, the whole essence please look up I've taught it here and let me just repeat it for the sake of this series the idea of being anointed from ancient times the context is to be smeared with oil but but the the idea of being anointed is to legitimize an operation so when we say an individual is anointed what we mean is that you have been authorized to be anointed means to be authorized to do whatever you are doing to be anointed means to be empowered to do whatever it is you are doing are we together to anoint means to legitimize an operation so that both the earth and the realm of the spirit no longer considers you to do it illegally so when the bible talks about being anointed it is an ordination that really is the essence of ordination to legitimize an operation are we together now so um, in its purest form the anointing has nothing to do with oil you see most times and, and now sadly when believers don't have the requisite spiritual knowledge and we get them into all these rituals of oil and the rest it turns into it almost becomes witchcraft sometimes all of those mediums only find their credence if and when the believer has an understanding of what he is doing 
to be anointed has nothing to do with oil necessarily to be anointed has nothing to do with a handkerchief a mantle some medium i'm not saying those things are wrong but the essence of being anointed is to empower you to do or to become and then to legitimize your operation are we together what is the anointing the anointing is god's ability please write it down you have to know the owner of that ability it matters to know that the ability belongs to god the anointing is not just ability the anointing is god's ability because there are many other kinds of abilities routed through there are there are abilities that seem to come from demons and come from wherever but god's ability at work in a human or material vessel please write it down the anointing is god's ability at work in a human or material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary results i'll take it again the anointing is god's ability at work in a human or material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary results so the ability belongs to god even whilst we take advantage of that ability god's ability at work in a human vessel or any material vessel and then the intent the goal of that anointing is to empower and to help that individual to accomplish god's purposes and then to produce extraordinary results a very fair definition of the anointing so immediately that tells you that that empowerment that legitimization comes from god and belongs to him now the challenge with many people is when it because of the the seeming autonomy and liberty that happens in the presence of the anointing you find out that people misuse the anointing because i can walk in the flesh i may want to make a name for myself right now and i can tell you there's someone here the power of god will come on and you will be shocked to see that it will happen but you will have to vet it from the lens of god's desire to know whether he was the one who directed that or it was just flesh are you seeing that now just because it happened did not necessarily mean it accomplished the purposes of god this is where the abuse of the anointing comes when i become a recipient of the anointing it is within my power to misuse it are we together and many sadly have misused the anointing for the gratification of the flesh many have misused the anointing for financial gains many have misused the anointing for all kinds of reasons so the anointing is god's ability at work in a human or a material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary or supernatural results i don't need to go into the subject of results we already settled that last week and i pray that by now you see that if your christian experience is barren of results jesus christ will never truly be glorified in your life i hope we're done with that i'm sure that we've settled that already that in our lives manifesting extraordinary results jesus is glorified and we the saints also are glorified john 17 and verse 1 the prayer of jesus he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said father the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so two people are being glorified here the son is glorified the father is glorified hallelujah it is very important to understand this subject of the anointing i have had the honor and the privilege of talking praying with so many ministers of the gospel through the years and most times because of the privilege of what god has done and continues to do in and through my life when i meet ministers usually 
the prayer all they want is an impartation of grace they will tell you sincerely apostle i'm not getting this result i'm not getting that result i don't know why it's like that i just need that engracing so subconsciously most people know that every time your life is barren of results in addition to the principles you may learn there has to be an engracing upon you to produce those possibilities i have said it and i will repeat myself here in koinonia please listen to me as a human being unassisted by any spiritual agency there is only so much you can do there is a certain degree of results there is a threshold of results and manifestation of possibilities that when you cross it tells men that you are no longer alone there has to be a spirit agency that is assisting you are we together whether in business whether in ministry it is impossible as a human being unassisted to produce certain dimensions of results it cannot happen this is very important now listen very carefully why do we need the anointing let's answer the question why this also tells you the the there are two primary assignments of the anointing and I want you to understand this they may not be the only ones but according to my study of scripture and even in my experience and the experience of so many who have been given unusual access to the anointing we learn that the anointing is useful in the life of the believer for two principal reasons number one the anointing empowers the believer to subdue the forces of darkness that fight against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom why do we need the anointing number one the anointing empowers the believer to subdue the anointing empowers the believer to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom so the first assignment of the anointing is to provide empowerment to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and the advancement of the kingdom. Is Satan fighting your destiny and my destiny? Absolutely. How long? For as long as you will be alive. Are we together? Psalm 66 and verse 3, it has become an anthem in this ministry. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways? It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you. Is God's servant Bishop David Oedeko who would say that the only language Satan understands is the language of power. And he's right satan does not understand english does not understand french satan does not understand negotiation the only thing he understands is power ask egypt um, israel in egypt nine plagues and satan through pharaoh would not let them go but one last plague and it compelled him to let them go so the anointing addresses satan now it's very very important for you to understand this you see, Satan is spirit. Satan is not flesh. It is not only God who is spirit alone. Satan is also spirit. Do you know what that means? You cannot arrest him. Number two, you can't take him to a court. Number three, the military cannot help you fight him. Number four, you cannot set him on fire. All the things you do to men to find peace, you cannot do with him. Satan is spirit. The angels, the fallen angels, and all the demons and the cohorts of hell, they are spirits. Even though their damage is not spiritual alone. Their damage starts from the realm of the spirit, but it has a physical expression in your life. When the devil plants sickness in your body, it can start from a dream, but it will not end at a dream. It will manifest physically, and you will see the injury, you will see the pain, when satan programs disfavor upon a believer it can start from the realm of the spirit but you will shockingly see it manifest physically are we together so it takes the anointing 
to be able to subdue the forces of darkness let me tell you this do you know every time you stand before god's people please look up to make an altar call i want you to know that we are not the only ones who are seeing you angels are witnesses to that salvation that prayer demons are also witnesses from the day you declare the lordship of jesus christ an intentional line has been drawn between you and satan for the rest of your life whether you are alive except you die but provided you are alive satan is interested in you apostle who did i offend that's not the issue when you were saying jesus i love you you are a potential threat to the kingdom of darkness satan does not give you a chance to grow before he attacks you he knows what the life of god is and he knows what you received even though you don't know it you may you may trivialize what you received but satan understands the implication of being saved in fact satan does not even wait for you to be saved the moment you are born if you just if you are born and you appear just with a spirit he won't really bother you because you don't have the legitimate ground to function on the earth but the moment you manifest with this material body you are already a potential threat that's why you read in the bible satan killed children he didn't even give them a chance to grow are we learning why do we need the anointing so that we can have that empowerment to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and fighting against the advancement of the kingdom it was jesus that was speaking and he said right from the days of john the baptist he says the kingdom suffered violence and he said the violent will take it by force are we together the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness it is true when you leave satan unhindered he will kill everything he can kill he will steal everything he can steal he will destroy everything he can destroy john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy satan's tripartite signature the moment if you are unsure who is around verify it with these tripartite activities if satan comes he will never leave you the way he met you he must steal something if satan comes and passes you and you are alone except god helped you or intercession saved you or it's not him but if it is satan you know there are people called pick there are these boys that are experts in stealing they can lift their hands and still steal <laughs> praise god they can pass you with their hands lifted and yet something will still be missing and it's not diabolism how they I, I, praise the name of the lord so satan is like that he can pass through your finances he can pass through your marriage he can pass through the life of your children he can pass through your spiritual life he can pass through your destiny he can pass through a church he can pass through a ministry he can pass through the life of a man of god you know it is him because something must be stolen something must seem to die something must seem to be destroyed someone shout no way shout it again say no way because for some of you before now you've not seen the necessity for the anointing and satan keeps camping you around that mindset and say are you an apostle no are you a prophet no are you not just a businessman don't mind them he's cheating you let me just advise you right now especially because of these end times the condition for being anointed is that you are alive the moment you are alive just know that satan will come to you if he has not come the messengers are on their way but through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves let me prophesy to someone that any force that has refused to let you go in the name of jesus and by the power that raised christ from the dead he must give up on you finally please sit down hear me your business will not just grow uh -uh. your children will not just be responsible people the ministry will not just grow your political career will not just flourish there is a devil who is determined to make sure everything god in your life dies 
are we together it will tear your relationship between you and your wife tear your relationship between you and your children destroy your finances until he reduces you to ashes mess up your ministry until you become a testimony of pain and shame satan for you when he does it you will sign it like julius berger will build and write signed everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen what makes you believe satan will fold his arms and watch you promoted you think he does not know what your influence will do to the kingdom man of god what makes you believe that satan will sit down and allow you to continue to be a rising voice you think he does not know what your voice will do to your territory oh zechariah and elizabeth it's not about barrenness it's about john who will anoint jesus there are many battles today that many of you are fighting that has nothing to do with you it is because of something that will come out from you listen when you see satan fighting your family what is what is finance does he eat naira and copper and dollars he knows that with that empowerment you will send your son to a mission school and in that mission school one day a prophet or apostle will visit that school he will have an encounter and he will find his purpose and become a mighty man of God so he will make sure that school fees never enters your hand help that woman please I can tell you firsthand every time you see the devil around your life he's not there to advise you he's not there to counsel you he's there to steal to kill and to destroy help that lady please listen can i be honest with you i have seen many demon spirits in my life i'm not telling you what i just read in scripture if you ever see men excelling in spite of satan something is keeping him you don't want listen to me for thousands of years of satan as a defeated foe he has still not given up on fighting god you have to understand the person you are dealing with you will think after the millions of years of his rebellion he should just give up one day satan is as determined today as he was when he left heaven what kind of a creature is that even some of the capons some of the armed robbers some of the terrorists they got to a point where they were broken like children have you ever seen satan repenting have you ever seen his picture on his knees saying god just punish me but i'm ready for peace most people do not know the person they are dealing with if you think oppressing you for 30 years will make satan say it's enough think again apostle he has tied down my ministry for five years one day go better satan go and read your bible a man who was thrown from heaven and after millions of years he is still determined to thwart the purposes of god is there is anything to learn from satan is determination can i tell you you were born in the middle of an old story that has nothing to do with you but simply because you found yourself in that space called the earth you better find out the rules of engagement otherwise you will find out that your life will become a casualty that you know nothing about i remember years ago a gentleman true story the moment he became 13 someone slapped him in his dream 13 years and when he came and met me and he was talking you know a little boy was in one of the schools then in zaria and all of that and he came those times i used to just see them and he was telling me that somebody slapped him do you know true story when he was talking to his father the father said describe who slapped you 
and that was exactly what happened to the father i don't know if it was around that time but at least as a teenager you know what the spirit was saying welcome to a battle that your being part of this bloodline has forced you you must be interested in what we are dealing with are we together why do we need the anointing because there is a real devil there are real spirits mother the devil will not fold his arms and watch your five ten eight children rise up to become responsible people no his joy is to steal to kill and to destroy you would think if you start crying once satan will pity you find out who he is there are people crying in hell if he's to pity anybody he will start with them not you I don't know about you but for me i've made up my mind as a covenant with god i have no negotiation with satan there are no discussions every time me and he meet he already knows i'm saying this because some of you have allowed the devil lie to you you are a woman don't get into these spiritual things some of you you are a man some of you you are not a prayer warrior you don't let the devil keep deceiving you and destroy your life let me tell you this see when satan wants to destroy a family his first target is the strongest person spiritually i'm giving you spiritual intelligence he is not stupid he will afflict with sickness he will afflict with pain he will afflict with frustration so that when you go down spiritually that hindrance has cleared the way he will now settle down and attack someone blasts in the spirit in one minute not my destiny in the name of jesus help those under the anointing in jesus name please sit down let me tell you something please listen to me listen to me listen to me i will not go ahead of myself there is a separate series on deliverance that one will announce it and i will settle down and teach you but can I tell you this? I don't mean to scare you, but Africa, listen to me. If you are a firstborn, listen to me. If you are a first male, listen to me. If you are a last child, listen to me. If you are a breadwinner, listen to me. If you are the one who lifts up the head of your family, listen to me. Satan, he attacks, but there is a protocol to the attack. so much ignorance in the body of christ listen please look up look up i want you to pay attention don't you think i'm wasting your time if you are the first to be educated the first for your head to be lifted in your family the first go and read the bible about the laws firstborns not just the first to come out of the womb the first to do anything in life do you know why because the first of anything is the seed and the pattern the first to open a door for a family is the first to create the pattern the first to break out of poverty you think the devil will fold his arms and watch you the first man of god from your village the first man of god from your family the first professor the first married man the first married woman
Praise God. Please sit down. Let me try to organize myself this night. Parashataba. Just help those under the anointing. I tell you, God is doing many things as I'm speaking. You came to church. This is Koinonia. No waste of your time at all. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Let me tell you one of the ways that Satan moves. It's called the power of patterns. You know what patterns are? Patterns are repetitive occurrences. You find out, God forbid, don't feel bad. Your grandmother was raped. Your mother was raped. Your daughter was raped. They never shared it with themselves. Yet the pattern will find itself again. Somebody spent 10 years in America, returned back to Nigeria like an arm robber. Another person spent 10 years in US or in, 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 in um, London, returned back. All those things are patterns. Let me tell you what patterns are. Patterns are sponsored by altars. Even if the initiators of the altars go, the altars are still valid. They will speak. That is the reason why you see nations go through patterns regions go through patterns individuals go through patterns families go through patterns even ministries go through patterns the anointing is not for preachers not the end time anointing the anointing is not just for men of god the anointing is not just for adults Help that person, please. I have seen wickedness in the lives of people. I have seen Satan dis destabilize the joy and the peace of families. I've seen great men of God with potentials to do things for the kingdom. But Satan just brought them down. I've seen business people who would have been the crown of their regions. Can I tell you the truth? Believe me when I tell you satan is not a friend learn from his rebellion and his unbendedness satan has never told god sorry he will never tell man sorry just believe that about him so when satan comes around your life and acts like a friend beware of what you are playing with you are not just playing with fire satan is every other thing but he's not stupid and he's not foolish. He has an advantage of age and he's using it well. Please sit down. Why do we need the anointing? To empower the believer to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and fighting against the advancement of the kingdom. Number two, why do we need the anointing? The second reason why we need the anointing is so that we can tap into the dimension of supernatural possibilities. Why do we need the anointing? To empower us to tap into the dimension of supernatural possibilities. Results and possibilities that are beyond the realm and the scope of humans. In ministry, in business, in politics. You think Daniel became an extraordinary politician in a harsh climate just because he could speak good English? No. Even the people consulted through divination and they found out that the spirit of God, they called it the gods, was upon him. They knew that this man was not ordinary. And through the dispensation of three or four kings, he still remained on top. Why do we need the anointing? To empower us to manifest dimensions of supernatural possibilities. I made up my mind as a person and as a man of God that I will never be ordinary. That my life and everything about it will be extraordinary, all wise. Not just because I want a name for myself, not at all. Because I have found out 
that when you follow the natural course of things time will cheat you men will cheat you systems will cheat you you need to have an advantage that is beyond the natural course are we together it's good to follow the laws of prosperity i have taught you but following only the natural laws of prosperity save johnny you will see when god will bless you or you will see when you'll be empowered in this wicked and evil world when you are one law to break through an evil man will reverse you back to start again more than compliance with the laws they are there and they are important i've taught you but there has to be an engracing that can pick you on the wings of the spirit remember that the unit of destiny is time that's why god brought possibilities like speed like restoration these are forces that insist and ensure that you live a victorious life are we learning now in acts chapter 7 and verse 22 let's look at two scriptures very quickly acts chapter 7 and verse 22 media please help us the bible says and moses was learned in all the wisdom of the egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds look at such a man do you know what that meant even though he was not an egyptian he did not have the history there was a supernatural engracing upon him he learned the wisdom of the egyptians he was mighty both in words and in deed they were preparing moses already the level of excellence from his life he was inevitably going to be the next pharaoh that's why when he returned you see as at the time moses returned back to egypt the pharaoh he left had died it was his son Ramesses, who was his friend that was why when moses looked at him and said pharaoh i'm sure Ramesses will look at him and say dear brother good to see you after over 40 years the only difference is that you have returned back stupid you were wiser when you left you've forgotten that this is egypt you come and stand looking like a fugitive with a staff and tell me some deity you met in the forest said i should come and release these people who have been in captivity for 430 years moses you have the wisdom of the egyptians and he said all right i'm not here for a long story let the rods i told you that they are also preachers i finished my preaching let the rod start his own sermon and when he threw the rod it became a serpent i can imagine pharaoh laughing and saying you still remember and he called janus and jembes the wizards of egypt and they came and made caricature of the rod of moses they threw pharaoh's rod it also became a serpent and god use that most of you have not discerned the sermon of the rods those rods preach the message that you need to understand you have heard the sermon of men but understand the sermon of the rods do you know what happened the rod that became a serpent ate that of the man and did not increase in size and he picked it up that is a sermon dominion over time and matter is real dominion God was saying something there. Oh, but I'm not impressed enough. And then one plague after another. You can see that Pharaoh was not a normal human being. You can see the Luciferian manifestation. This is why some of you need to pray for your children. You flog them, they come back and see misbehave. They come out of jail. They come out of the prison cell. Will you do it again? No. Two days, they are back again. It's not normal. That determination is not a human determination. It came from, it's an antichrist spirit empowering people like that. There are people when they are going back to prison, they don't even ask them any questions. They just say, just pass, go back. Just go register your name, change your clothes and go in there. <laughs> Can I tell you this? creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of god the sons of god are not here to repeat science science is an advantage but believe me god didn't take us this far to just come and be scientific i i, I guarantee you it doesn't take fasting to be scientific 
it doesn't take bible study to be scientific what we are manifesting is higher than science he did not just bring us to, to just do sociology or to do all of no 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 there will be a spectacular display before jesus christ comes the manifestation of a godlike dimension of power and grace in and through the saints it has been written so that it will not be changed the bible we will begin to see people manifest dimensions of intelligence i do i say this i like to study a lot about the world and all of that i like to study about ufos aliens for some reason i find those things interesting since i don't watch movies and all of that i now focus on those things and i read some of the ancient science that you know they tell us we are not alone you know there are all kinds of people around the world these ones these species of people and then i just read up all those things and in my mind i said no wonder human beings behave the way they behave there is a minimal level of wickedness that a normal human being should have when your wickedness stretches beyond that border it's not you again it's you and another spirit is that true no matter how wicked men are there is a limit when your wickedness stretches beyond a certain threshold you are empowered by a spirit the same way human beings cannot love and be kind beyond a certain threshold when you move past that threshold you are not alone too there has to be a spirit empowering you we need to be supernatural people you see our world today and i don't mean to cause trouble across the body of christ but we have to be careful there is a gradual exaltation of philosophies and science above the supernatural why because a lot of people just believe that societies and territories have been changed through their reception of science we're not against that but let me tell you sincerely this faith work that we are part of it came by a supernatural means it is sustained by a supernatural means find out how we are going to leave the earth it's not scientific what is the skyscraper that will take us to heaven with one last that blast of a trumpet those who are dead in Christ will rise explain the name of the scientific process that gives them new bodies immediately what is it called explain the name of the scientific process that suddenly withdraws gravity and we who are alive and shouting the name of Jesus will be on our way going and those who are laughing at us will wave them and say I told you I gave you a chance explain the name of that scientific process am I against science not at all but let us be careful because the flesh realm including science is Satan's domain he does not want you to rise or see reality beyond the three-dimensional plane because provided you are under the influence of the three-dimensional realm you are in Satan's domain he can manipulate systems and structures he can play around with your mind and destroy your destiny but when you rise to that realm and that plane your life becomes extraordinary we have so many doctors in this ministry there are many professionals it is not unusual that if someone is sick the natural course is to administer a treatment and that is wonderful but what if the doctor is not there and that person may not have the chance to see the doctor is there a possibility of administering something powerful who taught the doctor that you can stand before a tree and pick a leaf and process it in a lab and it becomes an injection and you put it in someone even the doctors depend on the supernatural for treatment the injection does not get to your heart when they put that injection wherever it enters your body they leave the rest do you not know that every other thing that happens is a miracle I read a bit about the human body and I'm surprised at the many activities that happen in the human body 
do you know when a human being is sleeping science tells us and medicine tells us do you know how many activities in your body shut down just because you are sleeping that means if as you are awake looking at me now you may think it's just your heart and maybe your brain that is working think again if you know the the it's almost like a riot in your body all the things the cells working if you don't understand they repeat it again this body is as busy as anything and yet there is an invisible hand that keeps it Every time I'm in the air, I think about a lot of things if I'm not sleeping. And one of the things I think about is the miracle of a material body that was created from metals. Runs and then lifts. And now we are above the clouds and we are under the mercy of the creator. I'm not, I'm not talking about the dexterity of the plane moving. I'm saying literally for 50 minutes or 5 hours or whatever hours, you are under the mercy of the creator. Do you know that if that plane goes down, there is no amount of... You, you can see the limitation. Flying helps me to know where science ends. The moment they lift, science says I've tried whatever you believe let it continue with you when you are coming down come down to my realm i will pick it up from where i'm limited and land you safely and the plane is moving and i'm sure that god watches in heaven and he's just saying oh dear these people do not even know who is flying them it's not like they met him to verify whether he's drunk whether he's all right whether he fought with his wife, whether he's under a psychological problem, you just know that the owner of the plane gave the man the, the, the access and you now had your confidence to sit down there. Why wouldn't I trust God? Listen, I travel a lot and if I can place my destiny in the hands of an airline, God bless them. A number of them are my people. I, God bless you. I'm not, I'm not speaking against them. Literally. When we are flying in the night, I don't know where we are. I don't know where. We, we believe everything they tell us. <laughs> and yet these are human beings that can make mistakes. Nobody ever says, verify that we are, we are you know. How are you sure we are safe? And yet the creator of the ends of the earth, when he now beckons that we trust him, we bring all kinds of flimsy reasons and say, God, before I take this step, prove to me. Yet we jump into the plane and sit down quietly. I'm using flight because almost everybody here or many of us here are maybe frequent flyers in some way. Just see what you do every day and every time. What of the driver that drives you? You've been hearing that they are kidnapping, yet you are still going to travel tomorrow. You would think that will make you afraid. You will still go and come back. The longest sea journey I've had was one hour, 20 minutes or so. I made up my mind that I won't repeat that again. 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 Not from the Riverine area. I've made my contribution as far as my experience is concerned my goodness let me tell you when you are and, and these are military people carrying me they are not amateurs just said lord well for me to live is christ and to die is gain if i die the only thing is that i didn't finish my assignment but at least are we blessed we need to tap into supernatural dimensions of the power of God. Everything that is natural has a supernatural expression. I repeat, everything that is natural has a supernatural expression. When you go to the market and you meet a trader, you say, I want to buy a wrapper. They will ask you original or um, what's the other, or original or maybe imitation depending on whatever money you have. 
there is one that looks like it but is not it there is one that is really it everything that is natural is like that imitation there is an original the bible says everything that appears hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 and 3 that it came from a realm that is unseen hear me there is a natural cause of prosperity but there is supernatural prosperity there is a natural medical cause of healing but there is supernatural healing there is a natural cause for growth but there is supernatural growth the choice is yours they both have their consequences if you choose to live a natural life there are many 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 things that you will be limited you will not be able to do many things but you can choose to command the supernatural even in your life are we blessed so the supernatural grants you empowerment to subdue the forces fighting against your destiny and against kingdom advance and then it empowers you to rise to a dimension where you command supernatural possibilities Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 6 Luke chapter 1 very quickly please Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 36 need to run through a few things very quickly so we'll pray Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 now this is Mary and the angel said unto her Mary now fear not Mary for thou hast found favor with God and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus we're reading to 36 he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end now Mary said to the angel how shall these things be seeing I know not a man you know what Mary is saying Mary is saying listen I it would have been believable if there is a process a natural cause of how things should be from a biological angle but there is a deficiency here how will it happen because I didn't hear you mention a man it is possible that God will speak to you and the natural formula for that result you will not mention it don't forget that it is God who is speaking are we together yes the natural cause was to wait for the angel to steer the water and whoever jumps in first but when Jesus came Jesus would have said I empower you with wisdom and the prophetic to know when an angel is going to come so that you will jump before the rest Jesus said listen I don't negate the rule but I can change it because I am God ah. if you prosper in one year naturally chances are excellent that you may be a thief or a fraudster you know all those kinds of things because you should be able to build with dignity and honor are we are we are we together now but God can come to you and say because of the cry of your mother and the burden of 10 of your siblings allowing you to go through the natural course of life investing slowly gradually receiving 10 percent every year until you are 10 years by the time that will happen your your parents would have gone and you may not have the opportunity for that prophetic word i gave them so there is something i'm going to do in your life that in one year now when it happens you will not go around telling people don't follow the natural course of growth that would be erroneous but you will know that your life was an exemption are we together and the hand of the lord came upon elijah when you want to go from one place to the other if you have a boat or a camel or a donkey you use it but in this case the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and another rule was created to him do you know why I'm telling you this keep learning the laws of the kingdom keep learning the laws of life but don't be surprised when an invisible hand picks you and moves you beyond the natural sequence of things I believe this I believe in diligence I will always teach diligence are we together but like I would always share there are times that your boat is fine there are times your fishing net is fine oh Peter 
there are times you are in the sea but you will still not catch fish that is not an issue of laziness the fish didn't come it's no longer your fault at that point you don't need skills again you need the one who created the fish to gravitate them towards you and say cast your net to its right side and in a moment you will catch fish that your boat will begin to sink hallelujah it is natural for you to start a business and then look for customers build a clientele gradually through integrity trustworthiness and after five years you would have gained experience made your mistakes failed cried prayed on god sown seeds and then you stabilize but god can decide in one year somebody can call you and mentor you and say you will be the african distributor of this product just like that and you are putting your hand on your head is it not in your bible that when the lord turned again the captivity of zion he said we were like them that dream what kind of miracle will make unbelievers join in the testimony hear me believers let us maintain the natural course of things based on the laws of life i am not teaching you to ignore the laws of life but woe betides anybody who laughs at the possibility of a dimension higher than science higher than sociology this is my problem with intelligent people and secular humanists they negate the fact that there is a god in heaven and there is a possibility to tap into that infinite power go to the village and they will tell you there is a natural cause there is a way you can plant crops and everything will grow but there is a way you can have an accelerated harvest do you want it when you say yes they will not say go and stand in the farm they will say go and meet a man there is something he will give you there is the natural cause of politics you can vote you can campaign you can talk to people they can help you you can grow you can build but there is, we have seen it in this nation where God picked people you know this one it was God that lifted them hallelujah I heard of somebody true story who bought a property it was worth some millions of naira this guy brought a, pro a property it was not up to two weeks there was a company that wanted that property but they were going through a protocol to meet the owner and quickly some money came for that guy and he bought that property from the former owner and they suddenly call him that there is a company that want to buy it it was almost 10 times the amount this boy stood in shock they were desperate for that land the owner that sold it to him wanted to make trouble and say return he said no 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 we finished our transaction this is between me and these people i, I mean it i'm not exactly if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking that was how this guy's life changed overnight many people suspected him of fraud he said i'm not i'm not a fraudster it was just the favor of God now the balance in church is that because of teachings like this many believers become irresponsible you see that they negate the natural course of things and they say since there is favor since there is speed why should I be diligent why should I build on relationships I'm not teaching you to ignore these laws but I'm teaching you that in addition let it be at the back of your mind you can produce posters as a man of God. You can produce handbills, billboards. You can invite people, do evangelism. But you know, like I know, that there is a limit. You can do the best that you can do. And someone can just frown and say, pastors who eat people's money, wicked people. That's the comment they will give. But there is a grace that can come upon you and can compel all and sundry to come and see what Jesus is doing this one is not charm this one is not um, whatever it is it is the hand of God find out what was on Jesus that made 5,000 people to climb a mountain with him and stay there must I climb a mountain to hear him is someone learning now please let me have your attention do you know why I'm happy for you because what is coming on you this night you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen in your life everything you have seen natural believe me when i tell you 
you are about to experience the extraordinary dimension of the same thing and i hope you believe what i'm saying please sit down let me give you very quickly three keys or yeah three keys and then very quickly we'll discuss how to receive the anointing and then we'll pray pay attention now in Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 let's rush Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 it says then he answered and spake unto me saying to Zerubbabel now this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel and it applies to us he said not by might nor by power human power now and strength but by my spirit saith the Lord there are certain results that happens by the spirit and by the power of the Holy Spirit Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 everyone please read the first sentence will end at Lord ready one to read but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord truly I am full of power to do ministry I am full of power to do business I am full of power for governance and politics I am full of power as a prayer warrior power as a prophet power as an apostle power as a kingdom financier truly I am full of power the anointing of the Holy Spirit truly I am full of power Luke chapter 4 please let's just go to verse 14 for sake of time maybe 13 and 14 this was a temptation of Jesus Christ and the Bible says and when the devil had ended all the temptation he departed from him for a season read 14 with me if you desire this ready one to read and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee and there went about a fame of him through all the region round about it takes power to gain visibility you can be sincere you can have a message but it takes power for your generation to hear you many of us this, it is this empowerment part remember i've taught you that the greatest need of an unsaved person the greatest need of an unbeliever is what salvation the greatest need of a saved believer is transformation and that through the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the word but the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment for many of us i give it to you that you have experienced a dimension of commendable transformation but you need the grace to defend the things you know hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you